Welcome to this video memory of the colorful ports, gracious comforts, and luxurious surroundings of your Crystal Symphony Voyage. Relax and remember the fun, the excitement, and the incomparable elegance of your Crystal Cruise. The pleasures of your ocean voyage began in one of the world's most romantic cities. A warm welcome set the stage as you sailed off to discover the charm, cultural treasures, and scenic delights of fascinating ports of call. As you began to enjoy the magic of your ocean voyage, Crystal Symphony was yours to explore. The sweeping curve of the atrium staircase leads to the attentive service of the concierge. Sun-washed galleries open into inviting lounges and the cozy library. Invigorating sea air encouraged deckside fun. As Symphony cruised serenely through the water, there was another warm welcome awaiting you. The Captain's Gala Cocktail Party is always a glittering affair. Sequins, champagne, and high spirits surrounded you as your captain joined his staff in saying welcome aboard.
Welcome to Victoria, my friend. The sights and sounds of Victoria may have you wondering if you're actually in England. This most British of Canada's cities was chosen as the capital of British Columbia in 1868 during the reign of Queen Victoria. Tea time and lawn bowling are just two of the many ways in which England is evoked in the atmosphere of the city. Part of Victoria's British character comes from its gardens. The streets of the city are decorated with color and Victoria is home to Bouchard Gardens, one of the most spectacular botanical displays in North America. An unusual attraction here is Butterfly World. It only makes sense that a city known for its flowers and gardens should provide a haven for these lovely winged beauties. That's a giant atlas moth, the largest moth in the world. And they're mainly found in Asia, Southeast Asia and India, around that area. Those so are the white tree nymphs. And uh, they were born this morning. And what they usually do is hang out there and dry their wings. And actually, a lot of them are ready to fly right now. They've been there for the whole day. If Victoria brings to mind images of England with its stunning gardens, it also has its own castle. Craig Derrick, this 19th century show place is full of lovely period furnishings, art, and stained glass windows. In keeping with Victoria's oh-so-British atmosphere, Anne Hathaway's cottage recreates the Tudor charm of William Shakespeare's Stratford-upon-Avon. Downtown Victoria is a delight. You can stroll along its quaint streets or hire a bicycle taxi. The historical buildings along Wharf Street are particularly pretty, and the waterfront invites a little urban relaxation. The meeting place in Victoria is the Empress Hotel. This ivy-covered landmark is one of the best-known sites of the city. As evening falls, the Parliament building is lit with a fantastic electric light display. A bit of England will always be found in the charm of Victoria. In contrast to Victoria's quaint English charm, Vancouver is a beautiful study in sophistication.
This economic hub of British Columbia has in recent years become a magnet for film production, for Asian trade, and of course, for cruise ships. A tram ride to the top of Grouse Mountain offers spectacular views of Vancouver and its surroundings from a vantage point of 3,600 feet. The Capilano Suspension Bridge provides another kind of aerial adventure. The lush heart of Vancouver is Stanley Park. Its tree-lined streets and paths encompass gardens, the zoo, an aquarium, a totem display, and a terrific perspective of downtown. Some people enjoy the park on foot, while others take in the beauty from the seat of a bicycle. Everywhere in Vancouver you'll see tradition side by side with modern living. Contemporary landmarks stand guard over the city's historical heritage. Here in Gastown, which was rescued from decades of neglect, there stands a statue in honor of Gassy Jack Dayton. It was Gassy Jack who saw that money could be made from prospectors and started a community that would grow to become Vancouver, Canada's third largest city. Any visitor to Vancouver is sure to appreciate the scenic beauty that surrounds this exciting city. As recently as 15,000 years ago, the inside passage was a solid mass of ice. As the earth gradually warmed, this frozen cover receded, leaving a coastline dotted with thousands of islands, which created protected routes along a north-south axis. Today, this passageway is a scenic delight. In some places, ships pass through narrows which seem to bring trees to within touching distance. Everywhere is beauty unlike anything else on Earth. While you enjoyed the myriad pleasures of your cruise, officers and staff work to ensure effortless elegance and uncompromising standards. At one time, bells rang out the watch, warned of dangers, 
and provided communication between bridge and deck. The bell has been replaced by the latest satellite and computer technology. It's a crystal symphony. Charlie Six, Mike Yankee Five. Charlie Six, Mike Yankee Five. Please come in. Communication is state of the art, and navigation is a new blend of high tech and expertise that comes with years of ocean going experience. Officers on the bridge work with officers in the control room to keep Crystal Symphony sailing smoothly through the seas. The engine room is truly impressive. Six main generators create 50,000 horsepower, which is used for propulsion and electricity. If you're accustomed to checking your car's gas mileage, it might interest you to compare the specials. At a cruising speed of 20 knots, the ship uses approximately 114 tons of fuel per day. Speeding up by just one knot increases fuel consumption by 16 tons. There are, of course, full emergency backup systems on board for added safety and stabilizers for maximum cruising comfort. Nine hundred tons of fresh water can be made each day from seawater, and climate control is accomplished automatically. From the temperature of your stateroom to the temperature of the caviar, from water purification to worldwide communication, the people behind the scenes had your safety, security, and comfort in mind at all times. The Misty Fjord comes by its name honestly. Rarely is it viewed without a cloak of fog and rainy mist. Occasionally the sun appears, giving this national monument a radiance seldom seen. Whatever the weather, the sheer cliffs, velvet green trees, and sparkling water of Misty Fjord are not soon forgotten. Although Alaska was the next to the last state to enter the Union, it ranks first in many ways. First in size, first in natural resources, first in national parks, and the next stop on your cruise, Ketchikan, the first city of Alaska. Its other nickname is Rain Capital of North America. Locals will tell you that rainfall is measured in feet, not inches. And it surprises most visitors to find that there's a rainforest so close to the Arctic Circle. In Ketchikan, you find water, water everywhere. One of the city's most charming areas is Creek Street. Once these buildings were home to the red light district, now they house shops and restaurants. The name Ketchikan is from the Tlingit language. Depending on the interpreter, it means thundering wings of eagles or Salmon Creek that flows through town. Because Tlingit is not a written language, variations in English translations are rampant. Everything about Ketchikan reinforces the importance of the ocean in daily life here. Blue and gold ferries, part of the Alaska Marine Highway System, are a vital means of transportation. Even the local airplanes have watery landing strips. Ketchikan has the world's largest collection of totems. These fascinating Native American sculptures are preserved and restored at Totem Bight State Park, 
A bite is a small cove or bay. Totem Bight on the Tongass Narrows was once a Tlingit Indian summer campsite. Just as you might associate rainforests with the tropics, you probably think of fjords as Scandinavian. But Ketchikan has a surprise here too, as experienced in an aerial visit to the fjords. The beauty and splendor of Alaska unfold beneath you from the exciting perspective of a seaplane. Misty Fjord is a national monument. Its 2.2 million acres were set aside for protection in 1978. The deep fjords and sheer cliffs are accessible only by float plane or by boat. If the water shapes the lives of those who live in Ketchikan, it also provides a range of vacation fun for those who visit here. Canoeing can take you gliding through the still waters of an icy lake. strenuous fun, kayaking is a way to get around town and get some exercise. To enjoy the watery beauty of Ketchikan without having to exert oneself, a cruise along the scenic waterfront is unbeatable. This first city of Alaska is a most appealing waterfront community. Dining on board Crystal Symphony was both a culinary delight and a theatrical display. chefs was devoted to the creation of a seemingly endless array of taste treats which tempted you from morning to midnight. One highlight of the dining delights was the extraordinary grand buffet. The question here was whether it just might have been too beautiful to eat. With three dining rooms to choose from, where to eat might have been the most taxing decision of the day. The onboard dining experience was not only delicious, but a feast for all your senses.
Welcome to Alaska's capital. Visitors can enter Juneau by one of only two means, sea or air. There are no roads which connect Juneau with the rest of the world. Alaska's capital also has the distinction of being the largest capital city in North or South America. Despite being sparsely populated, it claims 3,108 square miles of land. From the historical district to the state government buildings, you can trace Juneau's growth from mining boomtown to seat of Alaska's state government. The state fish of Alaska is the king salmon. The state bird is the willow ptarmigan. The state mineral is gold. And the state tree is the beautiful Sitka spruce. Anyone exploring Juneau quickly discovers it has a personality all its own. There's no doubt the pioneer spirit is alive and well. For some, adventure can be found rafting down the icy cold Mendenhall River. For others, the frontier spirit comes alive as they pan for gold. It was gold, after all, that really got things going in these parts. In 1880, Dick Harris and Joe Juno staked a claim here in what would be the beginning of the great Alaska gold rush. After an exhaustive search for treasure, some prospectors enjoy the pleasures of an outdoor salmon bait. A trip to Taku Lodge combines the exhilaration of a float plane flight with the sizzling taste of fresh salmon. And no one argues that half the fun of Taku Lodge is getting there. For an unforgettable look at nature's power, a journey to Mendenhall Glacier is unmatched. Landing on the sparkling ice for a close look at this awesome beauty is an amazing adventure. Mendenhall, along with Herbert, Taku, and Eagle Glaciers, forms the Juneau Ice Field. The city is protected from this enormous flow of ice by Mount Juno, Mount Roberts, and the Gastineau Channel. This shelter is responsible for the relatively mild climate enjoyed by the citizens of the capital city. This is actually caused by erosion. In fact, if you guys were just here uh, about the first week of June, you would not be standing where you are right now. In fact, all of you would be standing about here or out farther. Because this ice extended out for six more feet. These glaciers you see above us are called hanging glaciers. They hang on the side of the mountain. We're also moving down the valley right now to about two feet a day. Big rocks will fall into cracks like this. When these cracks close up, anything in it is ground up into a powder. And this looks like sand over here. You can see on the top we've been working on. It's actually ground up boulders. 
just rocks that have been ground up by the action of the glacier. Some people choose to visit Mendenhall Glacier without going airborne. A visitor center provides information and a lofty observation point. Juno might have faded into obscurity when the mining concerns played out, were it not for its being named Territorial Capital of Alaska. Today, both mining and government remain as the cornerstones of Juno's heritage. As Crystal Symphony cruised onward to another wonderful port of call, a glittering array of entertainment tempted you to play the night away. Dancing before dinner. A quiet cocktail with friends. A current movie. A date with Lady Luck. Of course, the dazzling talents of the entertainers. Mountains seem to dominate many of Alaska's cities, and Skagway is another settlement nestled in the protective arms of majestic peaks. Skagway's charm is linked to its raucous past. When the original Indian fishing village was overrun with prospectors, idyllic calm gave way to rowdy saloons and lawless abandon. Today, you can hear the echoes of those gold rush days in the tinkle of a player piano or the whistle of the White Pass train. Take a carriage ride or stroll along Main Street. And with a little imagination, you can transport yourself back to the days of 98. The treasure seekers who came to Skagway had a hard decision. They could try to get to the gold fields via Chilkoot Trail or over the White Pass. The Chilkoot was an easier route, but it took longer. The White Pass was more direct, but the treacherous mountain route claimed hundreds of lives. When the White Pass Railroad was completed, it eased the way over the mountains, but the supply of gold soon dwindled, making the whole enterprise of questionable value. What no one can deny is the beauty of the scenic panoramas that modern travelers enjoy as they follow the route of the White Pass through the mountains.
Skagway's history is a colorful one. It's peopled with the likes of the notorious bandit Soapy Smith and brave Molly Walsh, who ran a grub tent for gold-crazed prospectors. The city was founded by William Moore, who foolishly thought he could control the rush of gold seekers and profit from their arrival. The flood of settlers not only overwhelmed his plans, but also added insult to injury by changing the name of the town from Mooresville to Skagway. The name Skagway derives from an Indian word meaning home of the north wind. Residents who brave the location year-round can attest to the accuracy of the name. But in the summer, they welcome visitors to their town to enjoy the flavor of Skagway's raucous past. While visitors can participate in a reenactment of gold rush days, local residents often find themselves living the lifestyles of the past. Homesteaders who don't mind the challenge of the outdoors can live surrounded by the beauty of Alaska's scenery. Skagway lies at the head of the Chilkoot Inlet. The other finger of water at the head of the Lynn Canal is the Chilkat Inlet. And between them, on the Chilkat Peninsula, is Haines. This small but very welcoming town is surrounded by some of Southeast Alaska's most marvelous scenery. Haines has an interesting history. In the days before European contact, this area was dominated by the powerful Chilkat Tlingit. They controlled the passages between seacoast and the interior and grew wealthy from trading Eulishan fish oil for hides. The principal village on the peninsula was and remains Klukwan. It can be seen from the Chilkat River, which is also a superb vantage point from which to observe Alaska wildlife. In 1982, 49,000 acres were set aside as the Chilkat Bald Eagle Preserve. Along this stretch of the Chilkat River, an estimated three to 4,000 bald eagles can be found each autumn and winter. They come to take advantage of the late run of spawning salmon. Even during the summer months, it's a good bet that you'll see bald eagles in the preserve. The Tlingits offered a peaceful welcome to a Presbyterian minister who arrived in 1879. In 1903, the Army constructed Fort William H. Seward. The post was renamed Chilkoot Barracks 
and from 1922 to 1939, this was the only army post in Alaska. The post was closed after World War II, and the property was purchased by a group of veterans. The frame buildings were restored, along with the fort's original name. Today, the buildings are private residences and local businesses. The heritage of the powerful Tlingits comes to life in the songs, dances, and legends of the Chilkat dancers. The group, founded by a Haines resident, celebrates the rich cultural legacy of the Chilkat Tlingit. For those who want to take in the splendid scenery of Haines, there's a wealth of ways to explore. Chilkat State Park is filled with the native flora that gives Southeast Alaska its unique beauty. From the park, there are marvelous views of Davidson and Rainbow Glaciers. Rainbow is a hanging glacier that is one of the area's most famous natural attractions. Sightseeing can be done from the comfort of an excursion boat as it cruises the waters of Chilkoot Lake. For a little more action, jet boats negotiate the waters for a closer look at the scenic surroundings. For still more outstanding views, flight seeing provides the bird's eye perspective. It also provides the only alternative to cruising for travelers going between Haines and Skagway. The friendly town of Haines has much to offer visitors, from its superb scenery to the living legacy of its Indian past. Turning south, your ship headed out of the Lynn Canal. This is a dramatic passage with steep cliffs falling to water's edge and delicate waterfalls coursing down the rock face. A notable landmark in this waterway is the octagonal Eldred Rock Lighthouse. This is one of 12 lighthouses that were originally built to guide vessels along the inside passage. It was first lit on June 1, 1906, and this is the original structure. Reaching the entrance to the Lynn Canal, ships can turn west into the Icy Strait or continue south into the Chatham Strait. At the northern reach of southeastern Alaska, 
Yakutat Bay pierces the coastline and leads to an impressive series of glaciers. Largest of these icy giants is Hubbard Glacier. Rising in the St. Elias mountain range, Hubbard flows for almost 90 miles before reaching the waters of Yakutat Bay. Crystal Symphony eased her way through the ice of Yakutat Bay to the imposing face of Hubbard Glacier. The unpredictable power of nature kept everyone spellbound as harbor seals appeared, birds circled, and mighty Hubbard Glacier boomed with the force of glacial calving. Since the Little Ice Age ended a thousand years ago, Hubbard has kept humans and wildlife guessing as it's retreated and advanced ten times. Most recently, in 1986, it advanced so rapidly that it cut off access to Russell Fjord. This turned the fjord temporarily into a lake. But four months later, the glacial dam broke apart, returning the area to its natural ecological balance. This opportunity to view the awesome scope and icy beauty of Alaska's wilderness was a cruise experience to treasure. The splendor of Alaska's scenery is the highlight of a cruise to our 49th state. Glacier Bay National Park was established in 1925. More than 40 glaciers descend from two mountain ranges, St. Elias and Fairweather. Because the bay has such fragile ecological balance, no more than two ships are allowed in at one time. This allows all visitors the full pleasure of this natural beauty.
Lying on the outer coastline of Baranoff Island, Sitka enjoys a stunning setting on a sound dotted with pine-covered islands. Mount Edgecombe, a snow-covered volcano, looms over the entire area, giving the island some of Alaska's most memorable scenery. Tlingit, Russian, American. Sitka is a living example of the three cultures which shaped Alaska. The Tlingit Indians lived peacefully from nature's abundance for centuries until the Russians arrived in 1741. The Indians resisted the onslaught of fur trappers, traders, and settlers, but were finally overcome in 1804. With the Russians firmly in control, the port of Sitka grew into a prosperous commercial center. It was known as the Paris of the Pacific and was the capital of the Alaskan Empire. Orthodox Church had a strong presence, and one bishop of Sitka went on to become the Metropolitan of Moscow. The bishop's house is the only original Russian building still standing in Sitka. Other notable reminders of Russian rule include the blockade house and the cemetery. This was a thriving city when San Francisco was still a tent town of dirt streets and no culture. When William H. Seward began negotiating for America to buy the territory from Russia, the $7 million asking price was seen as Seward's folly. But he prevailed, and this land of extraordinary mineral wealth became an American territory. Sitka remained the capital until supplanted by Juneau. You'll see evidence of all three cultural influences as you explore this lovely Alaskan town. for tearing the meat. And all the birds, the hawk, all the hawks, all the owls, falcons, eagles, vultures even, though they uh, don't kill their own prey anymore, they just scavenge, have those characteristics. And as with all settlements in Alaska, you're never very far from the glory of nature.
After the enjoyment of exploring ashore, you return to Crystal Symphony ready to luxuriate in the comforts of your elegant home away from home. Your cruise was the perfect time to make new friends and create memories to last a lifetime. Wine tasting and conversation could be enjoyed at the bistro. An ocean view made exercising just a bit more fun. There were games for all ages. I one in six, I 16. And as you found, the beautiful lounges, quiet nooks, and comfortable meeting places provided just the right backdrop for your pleasures. spectacular scenery, fascinating ports of call, the singular pleasures of an ocean voyage, and the incomparable experience of crystal symphony, warmth, and elegance. These are your memories to treasure until we see you again.